This is part three of the demo for building a UML class model. I'm Michael Blaha. In part two, we found tentative classes. Now we're going to find tentative associations, and we'll find them by going through the problem statement again. You can see here on the screen, these are the tentative classes that we had at the end of part two. So there is a need to develop software for tracking library loan records. Library patrons may borrow books. Here's a library patron. Here's a book. Let's try it again. So library patrons may borrow books. And here you see the line here is a UML notation for an association or relationship. And this is a many-to-many -many association. So a book may be borrowed by many library patrons. A library patron may borrow many books. And let's put that name, pick the line, there it goes. Put the name borrows on the association. You can give associations a name. Usually you don't, but occasionally it's useful. Okay, library patrons may borrow books, magazines, compact discs, and audio tapes. So we can make relationships between library patron and these three. And I won't do that for now. Um, we'll, add, we'll deal with it later. A uh, library must manage each copy of a library item. A library item has copies. The so library item has many copies. And a copy pertains to one library item. So this is a one-to-many association. And a library must manage each copy of a library item. So a copy pertains to a library. And a library has many copies. A library must manage each copy of a library item. For example, a library may have five copies of the book the Grapes of Wrath. That's consistent with the model. Each borrower has a library card. And borrower is the same as library patron. And each borrower has a library card. So a library, so a library card pertains to one patron. Now if we just did strictly what this problem statement says, a library patron have one library card, we're actually going to make it many. And so, so that brings out an important point here. So the problem statement leads to tentative associations. We're not just treating it strictly, literally. The problem is, is if we make a library patron has, has one library card, oh, what happens if somebody loses their card? Maybe we want to have the old card in the system and the new card. Uh, maybe the old card will turn up at some point. So we might want to have both in the system. What happens if we have two different libraries and they merge at some point? They both have the same patron. And we consolidate the patrons, but we can still have two different library cards because the library cards have different books checked out against them. So it's really better in this model, even though that's not the ideal situation, it's better in this model to at least allow the possibility for a library patron to have many library cards. If we think in terms of a three-tier architecture, there's a database in the back plane, application code in the middle, and user interface code at the top. The database code at the back end is the hardest to change. It's got to be the most flexible. So we really want to have many library cards for the database. The application code, you can put finer nuances in the application code than you can do with than you can do with the database. So you know the application code could limit a, a patron to one library card except for unusual circumstances. And similar with the user interface, we can be more restrictive in the user interface than the database and even the application code if we choose to. And this model is focused on the database because that's really the core of an information system of a problem. So proceeding, each type of library item, each type of library item, so a library item has a type, and the type pertains to many library items. Each type of library item has these attributes. And then, for example, there's some more descriptions, some more references to objects. Ordinary books can be renewed once. Once again, more detail. Books with a pending request may not be renewed. So here we got that. So a book can have many pending requests. Can have many pending requests. And a pending request pertains to one book. 
So books with a pending request may not be renewed. The system must record the actual return date and any fine that was paid. So at this point, we've gone through the problem statement and um, dealt with uh, tentative associations there. Let's just look at the model. Um, just looking at the model, um, I can add associations which aren't in the problem statement. One very obvious one, uh, a library issues a library cards. And a library card is for one library. Uh, so we'll stop at this point in terms of trying to find uh, tentative associations. Uh, you can see we've made further progress with the model. We got a good start. This was very easy to do. All we're doing is processing what's in the problem statement. I'd like to make a broader comment. So this is, a, by its nature, this is a canned demo because it's a webinar that I'm posting on the web. But I use this same kind of technique in front of audiences live for real problems. I do it all the time. You know, here we, had a pro here we have a problem statement. When I'm dealing with an audience, I'll try to find somebody who's knowledgeable or a leader or somebody who's vocal to articulate the problem they have and state in a few sentences. And I'll take notes as they're talking. And I treat it in the same manner that I'm treating the problem statement here. And then I put up a model on the screen, just like I've been doing here in finding classes and finding associations. And I show it to people as we're building the model. And I don't really have to explain to you in advance. I explain it as I go, as I've done here, and it pulls the audience in because they can see the, the, the problem statement words they're articulating going up on the screen, and they can relate to that. And they ask questions, and they're not entirely comfortable with the notation, but they sort of understand it. And with me as their guide, interpreting what they say, elaborating their model, going back and forth, they can relate to it. So they give me information in terms of a brief description of the problem. They give me information in terms of commenting on the evolving model, giving me further information. Of course, you'll articulate use cases, and I incorporate them into the model. So, so like I said, this is just not a canned demo. This is a, really a useful technique in practice. This is the end of part three.